I want to share my experience of relationship as a vehicle for awakening because <laughs> this um, if anybody has been around this channel for any amount of time or has you know watched any of the other videos my partner Henry and I have been together for a number of years and have both been walking this path, having a process unfold kind of simultaneously. And um, recently we, you know, through the process of just really embodying truth, like a sense of truth on a very relative level, we realized that we are not a good fit for one another. And this for me has been a devastating process and realization or devastating truth to let in because relationship has been such a strong piece of this identity for such a long time. And there's so much wounding in relationship and such a deep sense of an unworthiness and not being good enough and, you know, just like seeking and craving a sense of love from something outside. And as this whole process has unfolded, there have been so many moments of those beliefs completely crumbling. So seeing, seeing through beliefs and having them completely crumble and then essentially life kind of pushing <laughs> into a new, a new way of being like a new, a new internal paradigm and it's been a really uncomfortable process and I think like my my relationship with Henry has been so special and you know I've gone through waves of feeling grief and I started kind of intuiting that there would be a parting ways between the two of us about a year ago and there were just like all these ways that my identity just clung and, and gripped tighter to it. And, you know, such a big part of allowing truth to really penetrate at every level is letting go. And that has involved letting go of, I mean, the way that it ended up is letting go of this relationship has been part of it but not just on an um like a relative level and not just like actually letting go actually not just actually letting go of the relationship but literally letting every idea that i have had about relationship crumble but the only way that that happened was that i had to see through every single pattern that was still playing itself out inside of me and how that was perfectly attracting somebody a certain type of a counterpart and so the Henry and I were just like velcro with each other you know like he his patterns pushed all of my buttons and mine pushed all of his and so without even realizing it you know we were both set up in just such a way that we kind of helped each other to fall apart essentially we helped kill each other is really what it was and and there's such a deep gratitude and I just I feel so like grateful in that but I want to talk about you know relationship being used as a vehicle and it can be any type of relationship it can be intimate relationship that has played a big role for me, a uh, familial relationship, friendship, you know, every, any way, even just like relationship with the environment, with the natural world, any way that there is relationship happening, there is opportunity. But the thing that I've had to come, <laughs> really come to the hard way, <laughs> I hate to say, but it was just like me beating my head against a wall for such a long time. But what I've had to come to really the hard way was that what I was trying to do for such a long time was use my idea of relationship as a vehicle and unconsciously trying to change the way that Henry was showing up to change the way that I was showing up or that 
to change what was authentically trying to express to just essentially like to suppress my own true nature and just realize that there was such a this was so habituated that it took me so long to see it and it took just the right counterpart which is why I'm like so deeply there's so much gratitude so this is like the most it has become the most loving parting ways that I could have ever imagined and I'm just like at this place where it's so clear that like that I don't need this person I don't need relationship I don't need anything in order to just like completely be okay because I found those things here and so there's no longer a seeking externally but so that was <laughs> the fundamental misunderstanding and I didn't even realize that I was doing this it's so sneaky was that I was clinging to what I didn't even realize was an idea of relationship and trying to hang on to that and use that as a vehicle. So I wanted the vehicle to be what I wanted it to be. But in reality, you know, using, or just not, you're not even using, I can't even say using, but relationship becoming a vehicle or being a vehicle is really what that is, is like a complete letting go and allowing the, the way that life is unfolding as the relationship to, lead instead of there being a me here that is trying to awaken or trying to lead somewhere where there is an outcome that it likes because it has an identity wrapped up in the relationship and so there is a very fundamental misunderstanding here but as all of this has really unfolded it's just so fascinating because you know I had so I'm 36 now and in my 20s my like mid to late 20s and even my early 30s I did so much work on myself so literally years of therapy years of psychedelic ceremonies years of various modalities like various healing modalities trying to improve myself but what I see now is that I was trying to improve something that didn't exist and so there's going to be like innate suffering that continues to loop in that but you know I, I see now and it's so obvious it's like I can't point for anything I can't point a finger anywhere like it it's been so so easy for me at certain points to point my finger at my parents and be angry with them for giving me the set of conditioning that I have but as that has really dropped away there's such a clear understanding that I get there, the finger can't be pointed anywhere because it's all like the ego developing and like all these distortions they develop in innocence every belief was developed completely innocently completely ignorantly and when I say ignorant I just you know I mean like literally ig ignoring to ignore like the reality of something in favor of a story and that's like the human beings like we're story making machines like if you look through human history the ways that so much history has been passed down has been through storytelling and so that there seems to be like this innate thing in human beings that wants to create stories and develop stories and so as children you know it doesn't and this is not to say that anything that happens to you or like any traumas or anything like that, that it's okay and you just shouldn't worry about it because you can't point the finger at anybody. That's not what I'm saying at all. Because there is this really interesting paradox of, how would I say it? Um, that it's not anybody's fault, but there is personal responsibility. So I heard this um specific example in a 12-step meeting years ago and I really loved it was that essentially like if say you get hit by a drunk driver and get into a car accident and have to be hospitalized and go through physical therapy and all of these rehabilitation processes in order to get yourself well again the fact that you got hurt was not your fault it was not your fault but your healing and how you move through recovering from that and and coming through to the other side of that is your responsibility it's completely your responsibility 
And what seems to happen in human beings is, and what happened in me was that there is this like gl gloving onto, without even realizing it, a victim mindset that, oh, this is um, the result of my upbringing and, and you know, these ways that um, I was either neglected or, you know, felt that I was mistreated or, you know, this specific thing that happened, this trauma. And I was pointing to all of those things. And what I didn't realize was that that was almost like a scapegoat. It was a, a way for me to avoid the pain of having to take personal responsibility. And what I realized was that I was so attached to that victim mentality. And what I noticed too, you know, just in, in those like polar opposites is that if there is you know, one end of a spectrum that even unconsciously is kind of gloved onto from an identity perspective that like, I am the victim, I um, was wronged, then inevitably the opposing energy of that polarity, so the perpetrator role is going to be completely unconsciously being projected outward. So in behavior, it is going to be projected outward. And I was so attached to having a victim mindset that I didn't realize, you know, I did realize it on some level, but I was not consciously like very aware of it. And, and this has been a process that I've had to like really see inside of myself that I was not aware of the ways that I was continuing to perpetrate those same wrongs. So I was essentially handed this set of conditioning and because I was so attached to being the victim of the conditioning, I didn't realize the ways that I was literally continuing the process of like handing that same dysfunction and pain to other people. And it was completely unconsciously that it was happening. So to use, to, for relationship to be a vehicle is to completely let go of my ideas. And so I had to get to a point where I, in my relationship with Henry, where I hit such a fever pitch that something snapped in me. And all of a sudden, it just shifted. And it was like um, kind of fall last year, but there was something in me that just all of a sudden was like, I'm finally ready to see myself completely clearly. And I don't care anymore what I have to give up because there was just like this, the, something that had exhausted itself in continuing to perpetuate loops. And, and, you know, in so many ways, like our relationship has been <laughs> so wonderful, but it was just really like a realizing that like through completely like radical honesty, telling the truth 100% of the time. And you don't realize how taxing that is until you kind of try to do that for a day and realize all of the ways that you're shading something or even not speaking something, suppressing something because you're worried that it's not going to be convenient for somebody else or somebody else doesn't have the bandwidth or the time or whatever, this or that or this or that. But all of the ways that we withhold truth and that function broke here. And so like any ways that I, that there was suppressing completely broke. And so I had to get to these points of being willing, completely willing to let go of my idea of what this relationship was going to be. And in doing that, there was such deep fear that arose. And you know the strange thing, like the really strange thing about all this is that there was such a fear of losing this relationship because there was such a fundamental feeling of um, of I'm not good enough, I'm not worthy of being afraid that this person was going to leave me. Like a fundamental feeling of defectiveness. And um, like there was such a fear in letting go of the relationship that I wasn't able, I wasn't acknowledging like my own true nature. So I was like disrespecting, ignoring, negating, like all the things. So like all the things that had been perpetrated onto me 
as a child, I was continuing to perpetrate on myself, on my own true authenticity, my true nature internally. So that's the ways that, th that those cycles were continuing to perpetuate themselves. And then that would attract similar energies externally. And what what's really strange is that now that all of that has been let go of, there's such a freedom here that it doesn't even, like it doesn't even matter that the relationship is ending. And that's not to say that I haven't valued the relationship or that it hasn't been like deeply transformative for me because it absolutely has. Like there's just such a deep gratitude. But all of my own shit, all of my own patterns were able to be seen through because there was finally a willingness, like a complete willingness to just stop and look like look in the mirror and to use the relationship as a mirror whereas like I thought that I was doing that before and in some ways I was but literally every single moment every moment where there's a tension that arises in the body or there's like this urge of to be defensive is is an indicator that there's a belief and a story there that's ultimately not true and it's not enough just to say that oh that doesn't matter oh that's not true or oh it's not real or oh that's not who I am or what I am it's not enough you have to actually like or I had to like dive into them headlong completely into them and feel all of the feelings and let them move through and let them move out of the body and that a lot of times looked like crying it looked like con like physical shaking and convulsing um burping like all sorts of very strange things but anyways what i was getting at was that the strange part of all this is that i was clinging so hard but now that this has crumbled i don't need the relationship anymore I don't need it to look a certain way and it almost feels like this relationship is going to be like as friends is going to be more loving than our intimate relationship ever was because there's finally like those defenses have been knocked down and I'm able to see myself clearly and see myself in him completely clearly to see that like there is we are one in the same like there's no <laughs> there's no separation and so there's actually like, you know, you, I hear, I've heard this before, like other, you know, teachers or people that talk about this stuff say things like this and, you know, just really realizing that there's actually way more love. I mean, so much more love here now, just such a deeper sense of love. And it's not that there's more love than there was. That's not true. But there was being so like the love that was here was being was so veiled and so obscured and so murky um and was so clouded by the conditioning and the and the patterns and the ways that I was trying to be a certain way that yeah I was obscuring the love and it's like there's the love is so deep and it it is not going to change you know, us not being together, like, it's not going to change it. And I never, <laughs> I never thought that I'd be able to say that, honestly. Because I've chased relationships my whole life. I've chased external validation unknowingly my whole life because there was like a, an innocent mistake that I made that I wasn't just okay just as I am and I it's that fell finally and it's like no it's this is good like I'm gonna be fine and there's like and there's an embrace of like completely complete unknowing and complete unknown and free fall and you know like there's like curiosity about all of that and like moments of fear but overall it's it's wild and you know, I'm, not everybody that goes through this is going to have to give up the relationship that they're in. That just happened to be part of what was required in my own process because relationship was such a, there was such a deep clinging and um, like ways that I would shift, like shape shift to get what I thought that I wanted, which was like acceptance and love. But 
the misunderstanding was that in shape shifting, it was almost like evading what was already here. <laughs> so weird. So strange. So, so strange. Um, so yeah, there's like a big transition happening right now. So this channel, you know, moving forward will likely just be me and you know, who knows, maybe Henry will make a guest appearance every now and then, but there's just like, there's such a special connection to that human. And there's like such a deep gratitude and like more love here now that I can see him clearly through seeing myself clearly than I thought was literally ever possible with somebody. And it's, you know, like our path moving forward is just not as partners and that's okay. It's like really, really okay. And like, literally it doesn't, I like look at this now and it doesn't matter like what kind of distance is ever between us. It's like, it doesn't diminish that. And it's really special too, actually, that this was a vehicle for seeing myself clearly through somebody else. And in doing that, I feel that I can see most humans pretty clearly because every part of every human, every characteristic lives inside of me. Like I have narcissistic tendencies. I have, you know, like savior, like savior tendencies. I have perpetrator and victim and abuser and all literally all of the things live here every single one and I've had to face off with all of those and relationship just for me at least happened to be the way that I was finally willing to see it because I was so attached to being loved that I was willing to do anything and then the little like <laughs> bait and switch by life was like oh now you have to give this up too and and you know, now being on the other side of that, it's like, oh, it's just, it's freedom. It's literally like, and it was such, it was such an innocent mistake, you know, which is so strange, so weird. <laughs> huh. um, but yeah, literally every relationship, like I can look at my parents and there's no more towards anybody. There's no more animosity towards anybody. There's no more judgment because I understand that the, these like ways that we are are literally just handed to us and we don't know any better. We literally don't know better. And so it's hate has dried up judgment has dried up you know animosity towards anybody that ever hurt me has dried up the animosity towards myself has dried up so it's pretty actually like really special and it's still like this is still kind of dawning and unfolding and deepening and the perfection is stunning the perfection of my relationship with Henry, it couldn't have been otherwise. It literally could not have been otherwise. No moment in my life could have been otherwise. No moment in history could have been otherwise. And it's so clear. It's so obvious now. <laughs> uh, and it's cool. I'm gonna be honest, it's cool. It's been probably the hardest thing I've ever gone through, like, because the way it was experienced here was a lot of grief and devastation and sadness and really, really hard and hard physically too. Like my body has been through a lot and has had to just discharge so much physical energy and it has been like pain, physically painful at times and difficult and um, yeah, just like such deep energy moving through the system and it's been really really hard really really hard in a lot of ways but you know I now kind of like coming out on the other side of that it feels like um like being born like in this interesting way it's like oh life is just starting actually 
so strange to to like really let that in that I wasn't living you know life was living itself but I wasn't but I was dreaming you know I was dreaming and now it's just it's beautiful like all it's all of this it's special it's really special and I couldn't see that before because my beliefs about who I thought I was were getting in the way um that's all that I have yeah see ya <laughs>